And actually, I think we're going to have another message, won't we? Yes, I can jump into that. Thanks, Edie. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another live community classroom with Michaels. Today, we have Edie Eatman with us for another exciting class. Today, we'll be crocheting the star coasters. My name is Lillian from Yarnspirations, and I'll be helping with any questions you might have during today's class. Feel free to ask questions in the chat here, and we'll be sure that Edie answers them. And while we're getting started, please let us know where you're watching from. All right, over to you, Edie. Okay, it's great to see everybody. I see some familiar faces here, and we're going to be working on the Star Coaster. I will switch my camera so that you can see the hands camera. And I'm going to be using Red Heart Super Saver. And the pattern, as she had said in the chat, is the star coaster, star crochet coaster pattern. So that's what we're going to be working from. Before we get started, I wanted to say something about the Red Heart Super Saver that a lot of people don't know. They don't know how to pull from the center and it's really easy to pull from the center. So what you do when you have a new skein of Super Saver, there, if you look at the little label here, it tells you you pull out one end and then on the other end, you'll see the little yarn tail and you just pull on it. So it comes out really easily and without all that mess, if you remember, you have to pull out this side first, find that, that tail, which right now I just have wrapped around and then you pull out on the other end. So that's just a little trick about how to use Super Saver as a center pull ball. Another thing I like to do before I start a pattern is I like to take a look at what we're going to be doing and sort of get an idea of what it is we're going to be making. So I love that there's a chart here because it helps me visualize what's happening. If you haven't read a chart before, I wanna go through it just real quickly because this is what I'm going to be using. To me, it's the easiest thing. You see you have a stitch key here. And this tells us there's an adjustable ring right here, which we'll talk about in a minute. Chain one, then in that ring, you're gonna put a single half double, double, three chains, double, half double, single, and then do the same thing around here. So you're creating two points. Come around, slip stitch. Then the second round is chain three, which you can see counts as a half double crochet, and a chain one space. And then we're gonna put a half double in the same stitch, half double in each stitch, and, and this chain, chain three space, you're gonna put two half doubles, chain three, two half doubles. Then more half doubles, do another little V stitch here, and come around and do the same thing on this side. So it's symmetrical. We're just creating two points on either side. Once you have those two this piece, you're gonna make six, uh, five more of them. So for a total of six. So that's just a preview of what we're going to be doing. Let's see what that looks like in real life. The gauge on this pattern really does matter. The pattern calls for a 3.75 millimeter hook. Now that is much smaller than you would typically use with Super Saver. So with Super Saver, you probably normally use like an H or an I hook. So like a five or 5.5 .5 or even six millimeter hook. This is 3.75. So keep in mind that this is going to be a tiny stitch compared to what you're normally going to see with Super Saver. So the adjustable ring method, you can use a magic ring, sliding loop, whatever you call it. I'll be honest, I was trying to read the instructions. I know how to do this, but I didn't quite understand the written instructions. I'm going to do it the way I do it, and then hopefully it will make sense to you. I'm doing exactly the same thing it says. It just looks a little different while I do it. So I have my yarn tail, and I'm going to wrap it around my finger to create an X. So you see that X right there. I'm gonna take my hook and go under that loop and then grab this loop and pull it up and then take my finger out and chain one. Now I have a ring and I've got the yarn tail where it's doubled with the ring. So you see, there's kind of my knot right there. I'm gonna work under both 
of these loops. So both of these strands as I work into the ring. <clears throat> so that was my adjustable ring. Let me do that one more time. Of course, you can always come back and watch this recording in case you didn't get it. So there's my yarn tail. I'm gonna create an X, put my hook under it and grab the working yarn, pull it up, take my finger out and then chain one. Okay, so now I'm ready to work the first round. I'll move my pattern so I can see it. I'm going to put a single crochet, then a half double crochet. And notice when I'm doing that, I'm working under both of those strands, both the tail and the loop. There's my half double crochet. And I have to be careful with this yarn because the hook is so small, I have to be careful that I'm not going to split it. And then a double crochet. Chain three. Another double crochet, again, working under both strands, both the yarn tail and the loop. Half double crochet. And single crochet. And my goodness, that center loop is looking really big. I can even give it a little tug if I want to, if I think it's getting too big. Then I'm gonna go back up and do a half double, double, chain three, and then a double and a half double. And that's the end of round one, but you'll notice that looks pretty wonky there. The instructions tell you to go on and join with a slip stitch and start round two. And then at the end of round two, they have us adjusting this center ring. I'm not happy with that. I actually want to pull on this yarn tail and make that center ring smaller. So watch what happens when I pull on this yarn tail, that center ring, I'm trying to do it where you can see it that center ring gets smaller. I don't wanna close it all the way. I wanna leave a little bit of an opening. So now I will join with my slip stitch to the top of my single crochet. And that is the end of round one. And you can see I have those two points. So I have kind of a, an oval shape here. Let's begin the next round, chain three, one, two, three. That's a half double crochet in a chain one space, and then half double crochet right back into that same stitch right here. Then half double crochet into each of the next two stitches. There's one, two, and then in this chain three space, I'm going to put two half doubles, chain three, and two half doubles. That's going to make it even pointier because we need our star to have some good points on it. One, two, three. And you may find this is a little bit tough on your hands. I find it when it's so small, when it's a small hook like this and a large yarn, I try to it, it can be a little tough on your hands. Then half double crochet in the next two stitches. Then in the next stitch, we're gonna do kind of a V stitch, which is a half double, then chain one and another half double right there. And that's kind of the side of the star, the side, uh, point of the, of the spoke, I guess you would say. What do they call it? A point motif? I call it a spoke, a pedal, whatever you want to call it. All right, half double in the next two. And then here we are at another point. So we're going to do two half doubles, chain three, and two more half doubles. And then the last two stitches are also half double crochets. If you're like I am, it takes a little practice to remember you're doing a half double and not a double. I do so many double crochets, sometimes my hands automatically do it. 
Now, you may want to join here with a slip stitch, but that's not what the pattern calls for. The pattern calls for doing my favorite kind of end of the round join, which I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to cut the yarn and leave a tail that's long enough for sewing because I'm going to need to sew these pieces together. And I'm going to just pull this strand all the way out. So you see, I haven't joined it. I've just pulled it all the way out. I'm going to take a yarn needle, thread the needle. Then I'm going to put my yarn needle underneath this chain. Remember, this is a half double crochet and a chain one space. And so I'm going to go under this chain, just like that, just like where I would put my crochet hook if I were putting it in under those two loops of the chain right here and pull that yarn tail through. And I wanna sort of match the tension of the stitches. So I'm gonna pull it up and then I'm gonna put it right back down into that very same space that it came out of here. And there you go, you cannot see that join. It's completely invisible. So I'm going to just, I want to keep this yarn tail. So I'm just gonna tuck it under here, right? Like this to make sure that I have not messed up the tension here. I'm pretty happy with that. And now that can just stay there while I make my other uh, points, my other star points. While I have my yarn needle here, I might as well pull this in just a little bit more and weave in my ends because there are gonna be a lot of ends to weave in. To weave in ends, I'm just gonna go under those stitches one direction, but then I wanna come back in the other direction. It's not just enough to go round and round. I like to come back and maybe go in the other direction to really make, make sure that is secure. So I can cut that, get rid of it. And there is one of my six points that I need to make. I'm gonna stop right here and let Lillian tell me if there are any questions in the chat that I need to answer at this point. I don't think we have any questions in the chat. Um, some people have uh, found difficulty seeing page two, with the lovely chart um, in the pattern that was supplied. So if they download the PDF from the chat, um, it does have page two there for everyone so they can oh. see the chart and follow along with you. Okay, well, that could be challenging then if it doesn't actually have all the information you need. <laughs> yeah, so if everyone just grabs the uh, version from in the chat, they'll have everything they need there. Okay, great. And I think probably if you're watching on a um, tablet, you may not be able to see the PDF in the chat. I know that's a problem sometimes. I've also dropped the link in there too for those people. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. So... Let me make one more of those just because we'll have plenty of time and in case you missed it. So I'm going to hold the yarn tail like this and make an X, come under here and over here and up. Get my hands in the center here and then chain one. And there's my yarn trying to split because my hook's tiny. Here we go. Now. I like to tell myself a story while I'm crocheting so that I don't have to look at the pattern, if at all possible. And the story I tell myself is I'm making a piece that's narrow on the sides and pointy on the end. So narrow is the single crochet, and then I need to build it up to get taller. So half double crochet. And my yarn is trying to split. Let's go back, try that again. Half double crochet, then the next tallest stitch is a double crochet. And now I've reached my point. So I'm going to do one, two, three chains. I'm gonna do another tall stitch, double. Then I'm gonna step back down to half double, down to single back up to half double, starting on my other side, then double, then my chain three, one, two, three, and then 
double again, again, working over both the loop and that yarn tail. If I'm not working over two of them, I won't be able to close that. So if I lose track of where I am, the phone rings or something, or I, or I get distracted by the doorbell ringing, I can come back and say, well, where was I on here? Well, I can look and I can say, well, there I am. I've done my chain three space and I've done my double crochet. So now I can do my half double. And now I'm back down to that single, which I started with. Again, that's a really big loop there. I don't want all that. I'm going to take my hook out. And I find it can help to sort of put one finger in the center just a little bit while you pull on that. It just kind of helps um, hold things in place. So I'm going to pull on that yarn tail to close up my hole, not all the way. So you might make a note on your pattern. The pattern says to pull gently on the yarn tail at the end of round two. I actually like to do it at the end of round one. And I'm going to join with my slip stitch. And then another hint I want to show you this time. When I do one, two, three, I want to remember that that chain is the one where I'm going to be putting my invisible, um, that invisible join. And so I'm going to put a marker right here. That might help me find it a little bit more when I come back around. So I'll keep going. I'll put half double in the same stitch. Now this round is all half doubles. So I just put a half double in each stitch and two doubles, chain three, two, I mean, two half doubles, chain two. Let me say that again. Two half doubles, chain three, two half doubles in each corner space or each point. So that's one, two, one, two, three, one, two, half double, half double. Now we're here at the side and the side requires that we do that little V stitch, that little half double V stitch. So there's half double chain one, half double right here in the same spot. Then we're doing the same thing on the other side, half double, half double. Here we are at a point. So it's half, half, chain three, half, half, and then the last two half double crochets. And I'm not going to fasten off in the regular way. Again, I'm going to cut the yarn and pull it all the way through. And then take my yarn tail. And this time I have that marker there showing me just where I need to put my needle my yarn needle right through there. Take, get rid of that. And pull this up, put it right back down in the same spot. You're kind of doing a duplicate stitch. If you're familiar with knitting, you know, we do duplicate stitches in knitting. And there, you can't tell where that round ended. I'm just going to pull it under here a little bit to secure it. That's not I'm not fastening off. I'm not weaving it in entirely. I'm just making sure that I'm going to maintain the same um, tension. And that was not quite enough that I have here. So that's the way I want that one to look. Let me weave in this end and then we'll talk about sewing the pieces together. Lillian, are there any questions in the chat at this point? Not at the moment. We're all following along. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I should have mentioned that we are using US crochet terminology here. So this half double and single that I keep talking about, if you were in the, watching in the UK, that my single crochet is your double crochet. And this half double that I'm talking about is a half treble. So not to be confusing, but it can be confusing. 
So once you have these pieces and you see they're fairly stiff, that's a fairly stiff little piece. It's not floppy. You're going to take the right sides and hold them together. Now I like to check and see. You wanna make sure you know the difference between the right side and the wrong side. If you don't know, the right side is going to be smoother. So these stitches are smoother compared to this stitch. You see how this whole thing looks kind of bumpy? Plus the tails on that side, that's another giveaway. So you just wanna make sure that you are holding your right sides together like this, all right? And then, let's see, I'm gonna turn this this way. We want to sew from the side space to the end space, from this space to this space on both of them. If you want, you can use pins to hold them together. Sometimes again, it's easier if you put a marker so you can find that corner uh, or that little chain one space if you want to use pens or markers to hold them together. I'm not gonna do that because I won't be able to show you what I wanna show you. So I'm going to take this yarn tail that I left long so I don't have another end to weave in and I'm gonna bring it right up here on the wrong side to that chain space. Now, when I hold my wrong sides or right sides together, the wrong sides are facing out, I'm going to do a whip stitch. Notice that I have these stitches here, these Vs. I want to work the whip stitch just on the inside edge, inside edge of the stitches. I don't wanna go under two, I wanna go under just one. So I'm gonna look here, that looks like my stitch that's the chain space. So I'm gonna look at this one and that looks like my stitch that's the chain space. And can you see I'm just going under the inside ones here. And then I'm gonna do it on the next pair of stitches just under the inside of those Vs. So I'm going from the top one to the bottom one in this case. Or right to left, depending on, it doesn't matter which way you go. And if you're left-handed, you'll be going in the other direction probably. All right, so when I get down here, I've done one for one. I'm not making this super tight because I want it to be able to open up like this. You see how it's it's not, crunch together, it's able to open up. I'm gonna do the last one of my chains here. And for now, I'm just going to leave that yarn tail there. Let me, uh, and leave that yarn tail there. So that's what it looks like when I've sewn two of these together. Let me see how we're doing on time. We're doing great on time. So let me sew some others together. So. I just, it just so happened I made some other ones of these ahead of time. So here's another one. I don't wanna use this same yarn tail again. I have enough yarn, but there's a reason I'm gonna wait and use a different yarn tail. Um, you can use the same one if you want to. I'm just gonna use a different one. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna put my right sides together. I'm gonna to take this yarn tail that I had from the second one and bring it over here, kind of under some stitches, right here to come out where that chain space is, under there, and then the matching one over here. And again, I'm just gonna go under the inside edges. You may decide to go under the outside edges. I'll show you what that looks like on the next one. And you can decide whether you like that better. I decided I liked this way and it didn't really say in the pattern. I don't think it didn't specify. Sometimes if you don't know which is gonna look best, you try it two ways and then you decide. So I'm going right down here. This is my first chain of that chain space. I'm gonna stop right there, open it up double check 
that I've still got the right sides facing because it's pretty easy to mess up and all of a sudden have a wrong side here. So you don't want that to happen. Let me see what happens when we, I didn't finish this one off. Let me see what happens when we work under uh, just the outside loops. Let me finish this one. Here. All right, so now I'm going to put right sides together. Secure this a little bit better. All right now, I'm going to try working under just the outside loop. You see, that's the there's the V, but this is the outside loop or the loop that's closest to the wrong side. I'm going to do that, and then we'll take a look and see how we like that one. Oops, I did it. I reverted to going to the inside loop. I'm so used to doing that. Let me go back out here. Have to concentrate when you're used to doing something one way. So outside loop and outside loop. Outside loop, outside loop. Concentrate, Edie. All right. So now when I flip this one open, whoops, I did the wrong end. Look at what I did. Can you see how I'm all of a sudden going zigzaggy? Well, that's interesting. I'll have to rip it out. But let's see what it looks like. Look at the difference. Imagining that I did it right. Do you see how you have a little ridge on either side? That is the inside loop of the top of that stitch. So it cre creates a little outline because you left that loop free on both sides. Whereas here, we worked that free loop and it brought it a little closer together without this. So whichever way you decide to do it, you want to maintain the same method all the way through. Now, guess what? I did not do that on purpose, but it does show you something that can happen. So we all make mistakes, luckily, it's not that hard to come back here. All right, what did I do wrong? I ended up sewing along this edge. I need to pay attention. I want to sew along this edge so that it does like this. So let's try that again. And I'm gonna go this time, let's go, I'll go under the outside loops again make sure I'm headed in the right direction. Outside, outside. I'll do this real quickly because I want to show you what happens if I go under both loops. I would encourage you to try it yourself, all of these ways, because when you do it, you'll remember better. Yes, I can show you all this, but you're just watching it on a video. You're not gonna remember it. There we go, you can compare that. You see those two little ridges there. And you may think that's decorative and that may be fine. So if you like that, sure, go ahead and use it. Let me do one more real quickly here. I'm not gonna do all of them. So here I have another set, another point that I'm gonna use. This time I'm gonna go under both loops of, of the stitches and we'll see what, ha what happens with that. So here I'm gonna go under both loops here and both loops here. This is going to create a much thicker seam when I'm going under both. It's not necessary, but I do think it's instructive to see what happens. I often try multiple methods until I decide which way I think works best in a particular situation. So we'll go under here and flip that open. First of all, can you see that it's not lying as flat as these other ones? I don't know if you can tell that. It's, it's, a, it's thicker and it's, it's just, it just doesn't feel as good. I don't think it looks bad but my favorite way is to do it this way. Okay, 
So when you have done all six of them, you have all these ends. Look, bingo, it changed color too. How about that? Remember on the last one, you're going to have to sew two sides. So when I'm doing this one, I'm going to have to sew it on both sides. All right. So here I have all these yarn tails that I left. Well, I wanted to leave them because I wanted to decide what to do here in the center. I've got a pretty big hole left there. And I look at the picture and maybe that picture looks like there is a hole there, but maybe it's not quite as big. So what can I do? Let me just grab one of these. And I'm not even sure because I haven't tried this, but something I would experiment with is, let me pull it to the front so we can see what's going on. I would experiment with various ways of making the hole a little bit tighter. So maybe stitching across and pulling it in like this. I don't know. We'll try it. We can always rip it out because I'm not, I'm not putting um, my, my needle under any strands. So I could sew it a little closer together. I don't like the way that looks. I'm going to pull that out. I might be able to sort of gather it together using, uh, using kind of a gathering or running stitch. So maybe I'm gonna go in and out through my edges here, like in and out and see if how that's gonna work. Kind of like when you close the top of a hat you know, you have that little hole at the top of the hat. What happens when I pull this closed? As long as I'm not pulling it too tightly so that it's not going to lie flat, I kind of like that. I think that looks, there's still a little bit of a hole there, but I think it looks okay. And I may even have done it from behind. That might look better, but I don't know. What do you think? Do you think that looks a little better than having that big hole that I had before? So just experiment to see what's going to feel right to you. Then, of course, you would have all those ends to weave in. Now it's not that hard to do. I'm probably going to weave them in going back and forth through here because that seems pretty easy. I have those loops left that I can use. And I'm going to do it for all these other ends that I left, too. So I like to wait to weave these in until I'm totally sure that I like the way that it's lying flat, it's behaving the way that I want it to, and then I'll weave in those ends. Because I left those ends like that, I could fix some of these seams if I didn't like the way they looked. I also wanted to point out the reason I didn't use the same yarn for all of the seams is because I wanted to work from this point in for each of the seams. So I didn't wanna work across like this. I wanted to work in toward the center, but you can decide you're probably gonna make a bunch of these and you may come up with a better way of doing it. So this is the way I ended up doing it and I think it looks fine. Let me talk about gauge because this is a project where you think gauge doesn't matter. And Indeed, gauge isn't crucial here, but I want to show you what I did. When I first started, I just grabbed a hook and I made one of these with the size H hook because I thought, oh, it's, it's red, it's super saver. We're going to use an H hook. And I didn't look at the pattern because, you know, why would I, right? So then I saw, oh, it was calling for a 3.75 millimeter hook. Well, that was surprising. Okay. So why does it matter? Well, the gauge called for in the pattern says it's a, the measurement is about seven inches from point to point, blocked and stiffened. But each point motif, each one of these, is two inches wide and two and three quarters inches long. So let's see how I did in terms of gauge. I usually use a ruler, but I have my little red heart tape measure, so that's always fun. So it says it's two and three quarters inches long. Look at that. I would call that two and three quarters inches long, wouldn't you? Just exactly. Let's see if it's two inches wide. Eh, maybe a shade under two inches, but I don't know, pretty close. 
right? So that tells me that when I finish this, I'm going to be, it's going to be about seven inches across from point to point. Mine is not. I sewed it together and it's about six inches across from point to point. I didn't go back and, and check that, but still, this is a coaster. That's a pretty good size for a coaster. It's here. Let me reach over here. There's my drink. You can't really see it, but that's kind of coaster size. Seven inches would be okay. Here's the piece I did in size H hook. Can you see how much bigger this is than this one? My coaster, if I made it with this size hook, my coaster would be a trivet, which is fine, but it's going to be, you know, like, let's see, this is three and a quarter or so. So it's going to be like eight inches across or, you know, it's going to be much bigger than this star. So if you want to make a trivet, use a larger hook. Then the other thing that the pattern calls for, because it's asking for this to be really stiff, and this is pretty stiff. And if you're doing it with that smaller hook, you can feel this is not a fabric that you would want to make a garment out of or a blanket, because it wouldn't, you see, it sort of stands on its own. You can see it's not droopy at all, except I drop it. Um, and the pattern calls for using fabric stiffener. So it tells you to weave in the ends and block to the finished measurement. So it's actually asking me to stretch it out to seven inches and pin it out and then spray with fabric stiffener, which I don't have any of, and I think it would be weird to show it here on camera too. So if you want to use fabric stiffener on your coaster, you can certainly do it. I wouldn't have thought of it because I don't use fabric stiffener. Like I have plenty of floppy coasters. I can reach right over here. Here's a coaster I made. It's, it's you know, it's floppy. It's just, it's absorbent. So if you want to use fabric stiffener, you certainly can, but you don't have to. I think it would be fine without it. So let me stop here and see what questions there are. I'm going to take a quick drink. Thanks, Edie. We do have a question here from Carol. Mm -hmm. uh, she asks, wouldn't it be better to use cotton yarn for this so the heat won't melt it? Well, so yes, cotton yarn would work great. Cotton yarn is absorbent. So you absolutely, you can use any yarn you like. So you don't really worry. I don't really worry about heat and coasters because I'm not usually putting super hot things on a coaster. I'm usually putting cold things or at least, you know, a, a mug of coffee or something. That's not going to melt the acrylic, but certainly if you want it absorbent, um, something that's all cotton would be a good choice. Yep. Thanks. Is there, say, something like a, a pot holder or things like that that you wouldn't use acrylic yarn for? Right, exactly. If you're doing a pot holder, anything that's that's going to be subjected to actual heat, you don't want anything that's, you don't want to use acrylic that's going to melt, for sure. Yep. Okay, super. Uh, that's all the questions we have for the moment. Okay. Well, and that's kind of, you want to see me weave in ends? I don't know what else to show you. <laughs> so, um, Let's see what happens when we weave in all these ends. And people ask questions. Help me fill up this time. This was an easy coaster. We did the things. Perhaps if there's anything that anyone would like to see demonstrated again, uh, they can pop that into the chat for us as well. Yep. So when I'm weaving in ends, I just randomly... You know, take take whatever is available, and I like to go in multiple directions so they don't uh, they don't come out. A lot of people leave really short ends, and I am not a favor of that. I mean, I cut them short, but even when I'm not doing something that I know I'm going to have to sew together, I still leave at least a four to six inch tail to weave in because what if I were trying to weave this in? Let me cut this and show you what happened. What if I had left a tail just this long? And now look what happens with my needle. Like it's barely long enough to use my yarn needle to weave in the yarn tail. And after I do one, my, my needle's bigger than my yarn tail. So then I have to take my crochet hook 
and go under like this and like this, which is why I think people hate weaving in ends because they haven't left themselves enough to work with. That's my theory. Now, I would never want to leave an end. I wouldn't want to cut it off this close to the edge just because, you know, it might show on the right side. So I would always pull it back in the other direction. Another thing you can do is you can put your needle in and then thread it. But again, kind of a pain if you do that. This can be very therapeutic. For those of you who don't like to weave in ends, um, you just think of it as part of the exercise, part of making the thing. And when you're weaving in the ends, you're almost done and you're going to have a beautiful project and you can watch all the Hallmark Christmas movies um, when you, because it doesn't take any brain power to do this. So you can, you can watch all, all the, whatever you wanna watch, whatever's on these days. I don't, I realized the other day, I don't watch TV. I, I watch TV, but it's Netflix or something. It's not TV, TV. I don't know what's on the channels. And other thing I do is I cut the tail as soon as I've woven it in, because then sometimes I forget which ones I've woven in and which ones I haven't woven in. Now I have a couple of questions here for you. Sure. Edie. Uh, so the first one is um, from Carol. Uh, she asks, how do you join the last point with the first one? Okay, I will show you that. So here I am. I just happen to have almost done one, two, three, four, five. Here I have another one. So this one fits right in here. And I'm gonna to have to sew it along this side and along this side. So to do that, I'm going to get my yarn tail. And I have to figure out which side goes where, right? So I'm gonna go like this and say, okay, that's gonna go that way, all right. So I'll start here. And I've decided I just want to do that inside edge. So go stitch for stitch down here. Again, not too tight. And when I finish, I'm going to open it up, make sure I did it right before I go along the other side. So I'll go like that and say, yep, now I need to do these two. And I don't have a yarn tail handy there. I'm just gonna do the thing I said I'm not usually gonna do, which is use the same one. So now I can see I've put right sides together. That's how it's going to fit. And I'm gonna start down here. I didn't plan it very well because I should have another yarn tail up on the other side up here, but I don't. And the, I'll tell you the reason too in a minute why, why I like to go from outside to inside or from, from, from outside down toward the center. Um, there's a reason for that. And some of you who sew garments may know that as well. All right, so get up here. Hopefully I've lined it up properly. So there we go. So I just sewed the last one on two sides. The reason I like to go from out here towards the center for everyone is if I got a little messed up and got off by one stitch, I would rather have that happen, like the unevenness happen down here in the center, because then I can go back and, you know, I'm going to be pulling things together or whatever. Whereas if I end up wonky up here, that's kind of the more public spot and it's going to show. You can hide a little wonkiness in the center, but you can't ha hide it as much out here, which is why I like to start here and go down here each time. Because then when I'm down here and it looks like that, I can, 
I can do something. So since I'm here, let's go ahead and take care of this center and see if what I did before works on this one. I just kind of went in and out. We'll see what that does. And right here, I'm just going in and out through the chain spaces themselves. So, and pull them, draw them together, do one more. I don't wanna close it all the way because I think if I do, it's going to not lie flat. I think if I draw it all the way in, you see what's happening there? It's not, it's not gonna lie flat. So I wanna loosen that up and make sure that I'm gonna get it to lie flat. Now I've still got all those ends, but blocking will help with this. Let me talk for a minute about blocking. A lot of you probably don't block, especially your acrylic pieces. Blocking is always a good idea. But with, with an acrylic yarn, you want to be really careful, as we talked about before, not to melt it. All right. If you put an iron on this, you're going to create a mess. You're going to have a different fabric. It's not going to behave the same way. So what you wanna do is you wanna just pin it out and then probably, probably spritz it with some water and just let it dry, okay? So you wanna block carefully. If you are going to use heat you want to, and steam, you wanna stay way, way away from it. And I actually have a, a YouTube video about how to block acrylic yarn and sh that shows you what happens if, you use heat and moisture and ha what happens when you kill your acrylic. So don't make a beautiful star coaster and then put an iron on it thinking that's the way to block acrylic yarn because it is not, you'll, you'll end up killing it. I use that word intentionally. It is called killing acrylic. So I'm, I'm not making that up. It's not a joke. That's what we call it when we melt our acrylic yarn. So, um, any other questions? Yes. Yes. Uh, there's a question here asking, uh, why would you use a smaller hook? So the smaller hook, what, whenever you're using a smaller hook on any size yarn, smaller than recommended, you're going to be creating a stiffer fabric. So if you think about something like this, which is a mohair silk blend, that's very diaphanous, very drapey, you see it's, you know, it's shawl like. You don't want something like this for your coaster, but you might want something like this for your afghan, but you also don't want a stiff, can, here you can see it a little better here. Can you see how stiff that is? That it's, it's not drapey at all um, because this designer, um, Randy Cavalieri, I think, yes, wanted the coaster to be stiff. So that's why she chose to use a smaller hook. Also because you, she didn't want it to be giant. So if you're using this particular yarn and you want it to be coaster size, it needs to be a smaller hook. So there's a real relationship between hook size and yarn size and the type of fabric you're creating. And I really, those of you who've been with me in the Michaels classes before and in other classes have heard me talk almost every time about fabric. You are not crocheting stitches, you are making a fabric. And if you can understand that you want to make a fabric that is appropriate for your project, you'll be much more successful. So don't just use the hook the pat pattern says or the yarn label says, think about how the hook and the stitches and the stitcher and the pattern relate and what kind of fabric you're creating. That was a longer answer than she expected. <laughs> A, a very thorough and lovely answer. Thank you, Edie. Um, and we have one last question here. Sorry, I'll just find it from Patty. Uh, Patty asked, would you show again how not to confuse the top from the bottom edges? The top, you mean like the right side and the wrong side? That's right, yeah. Okay. okay, so when, let's take a look at this one. Switch my camera here. So when you look at any crochet stitch, generally speaking, the right side of the stitch is going to be smoother than the wrong side. 
So if you look at the base of these or, or these digits, it's kind of hard to see these. Maybe looking at the half double is easier to see. So take a look at what the right side of the stitch looks like. And then when you turn it over, can you see that one's much bumpier? So the bumpy side, this, is, this was done all with right side facing. We didn't turn anything around. We didn't turn our work. So the bumpier side is going to be the wrong side. You can see that in the, the whole coaster. You can see that these stitches are bumpier than these stitches. But just, just consider if you can't really tell the difference, when you start out and you're doing that first ring, remember you're, you can always put a marker on the right side just to remind yourself. Just use a stitch marker and stick it right there on the right side. And then when you're putting them together, if you can't really recognize which is which, if you've marked the right side on all of them, then you'll know when you start putting them down and right sides together, you'll know that it's the marker sides together. I'm a big fan of using stitch markers for all kinds of things. So I use stitch markers to just to keep from messing up, basically. Okay. Any other questions? That's it, I think. Um, we are having a little discussion about um, where we should, uh, like if we're stuck in a pattern, who we could reach out to, that kind of thing. I just re recommend it to everyone that uh, they're very welcome to reach out to our customer service team if it's a Yarnspirations or a Red Heart pattern. We also have some great Facebook groups. There's the Yarnspiration Stitch Squad, the Red Heart Lovers Club, and there's also the Cro Crochet Crowd Stitch Social, which are all great groups. And I wondered, Edie, if you had anywhere that you could recommend. Um, there's so there are lots of groups on Facebook. Facebook is what I'm most familiar with. So I would just search for knit or crochet. I live in Virginia. I belong to a Virginia knitters and crocheters, whatever. And there are a lot of people who answer questions there. And you can always write to the designer if you know the designer, especially if it's a self-published pattern. Um, I usually write to the publisher if you think there's an, a problem with the pattern, like if you think there's an error in the pattern, write to the publisher. If it's just a challenge of you can't understand how to do it, YouTube's great, right? YouTube or just doing a Google search for how to whatever. Um, and I'm always happy to answer questions for people, for, for my self-published patterns, if they, if they aren't understanding something or especially if they think there's an error in um you know in a pattern because every designer every publisher does their very best to publish error free patterns but it is really hard to do so we do rely on people who are making it to say ah, i think you meant such and such here whatever absolutely that's really good advice thanks Oh, and Megan's just asked about your beautiful shawl. So I'll drop that pattern into the chat. Right. Maybe you this want to tell is, us about it? This is my easy, what did I call it? Easy sweetheart shawl. And you can also see it. There's a red version over there. There's my holiday version. It is super easy. And it's also, there's a free version on my blog, which um, she put in the chat, but super, super easy to do with um, just beautiful yarn and you, you could still make one or two of these if you needed to give a gift. I mean, they're that fast and that easy. So fun to wear, easy to wear. Thank you very much. I've made three of them and I'm not giving any of them away. Thank you very much. <laughs> so great, thank you. All right. Um, yeah, another thing I wanted to say about patterns and being stuck, and I actually posted this to Facebook last week and got a lot of engagement with it. Patterns have more mistakes at night than they do in the morning. Now, you may not believe me, but it can be impossible to follow a pattern at 10 p.m. and you look at it the next morning at 9 a.m. and it makes perfect sense. So if you're struggling with how to do something or how to learn something and it's nighttime, just put it away and try it again in the morning when you're well rested, it will make all the difference. I say this from experience. I think it's very wise advice, thank you. <laughs> all 
All right, I think that's all the questions. Okay. And I think we can go ahead and uh, wrap up. Okay, great. Well, thank you and happy holidays, everybody. Happy New Year. See you in 2022. Thanks so much, Edie. And thank you everyone for joining us today for this live community classroom with Michaels. Don't forget to share your work with hashtag makeupwithmichaels and hashtag Yanspo. And just a reminder that you can find more classes on michaels.com and the recording of today's class at michaels.com classes. Thanks everyone. Thanks again, Edie. Good night. Good day. <laughs>